Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Barry Chapel coming to you from downtown Hollywood here, home of Primetime Shopping Network. I got a big show tonight. I got David Lloyd Glover coming on live a little bit later. I have all kinds of stuff. Got some famous autographs. I got a royal. I got Schofields. You name it, I got it. Tell you what. Ashley's working camera. She took over the joint, David. Yeah, she's working camera. <coughs> oh, yeah, but uh, you got to be careful. She's got a special shock button on the mic. Oh, yeah, she could. You want to see something cool? This is uh, Michael Schofield. Michael John Schofield. This he did in 2023, 2022, <coughs> excuse me, it is item number BC 786, 2786. That is a unique composition for Michael. Michael Schofield is one of the most famous landscape artists ever. He, uh, Michael's. What's that? Oh. Oh, you're talking to somebody. You got a voice in your head again? Oh, boy. Now we got to be real careful, David. The voices came back. Damn. Yeah. No, they're voices in her head. Here is... Uh, on Hub's Historical, and this is 15, 16 years ago. He was selling paintings for 48000 Michael Schofield is in the billion, with a B, billion dollar Arm & Hammer collection. I don't have many Michael Schofields left. And David Lloyd Glover, who's a friend of his, told me today that Michael shut on his studio. Closed up. He's done. He's 76 or 77. 77. Yeah, my. Yeah. So I want you to take a good look at this because Michael Schofield, a lot of his art sells for 20, 25, 30,000. He's in the Library of Congress collection. He's in the Smithsonian collection. And he's in the billion dollar arm and hammer collection. Yeah, retail at least twenty five thousand and it is just stunning. But this is the first hour, Ashley. This is the hour that's trying to kill me. This is the hour where we just have the internet. And in, uh, in fifty five minutes, fifty six minutes we get our other affiliates. So what would you do, Patty? using all the knowledge at your command, every ounce of knowledge at your command right now. I'm only on the internet. I don't know if anybody's watching me. Is anybody watching me? Take your time. Don't go running back in there. That's how accidents happen. Have you ever tripped running in there, Matt? No, don't you stop, no. no, of course not. Look, I'll knock on the wooden easel. Just saying, that's how accidents happen. All right, here's what I'm thinking, just to see. Okay. Ashley, this is going to cost me big time. This is a true test. Oh, this is not. This is going to be ugly. All right, I'll tell you what. This is so cheap. How much did I pay for this? Yeah, too cheap. Oh, we get 3500 to open all day long, and he quit painting. I only have five Schofields left, done. He's, he quit, shut down his studio and everything. I'll tell you what. Oh, this is too cheap. $900 to open, $100 increments on legendary artist Michael Schofield in the billion, with a B, billion dollar Arm & Hammer collection. He is in so many museums. I mean, this is the Michael Schofield. 
That's too cheap. If I get in trouble for selling that cheap, Ashley, blame it on the guy with two L's in his last name. <laughs> now nah, we're not even going to count the D. All right, I hear somebody calling or not. Well, is someone texting you, Ashley, about this painting? If not, no. All right. That would have been an amazing opportunity. I'll tell you what I will do. Guillaume uh, Azule. I don't know if a lot of people, yeah, I'll tell you what. Let me take this Schofield down. Let me show you one more Schofield, and then I'll move on to Eric Dickerson. Yeah, pro baseball player. He's 55. Take a look at this Schofield. Now, can you guess the atom number on this one, Ashley? Can I guess it? Yes. Is it on the back? Yes. I don't want you to look it up. I just want to see if you can guess it. Uh, BC 2793. This is one of the most amazing Schofields. It's oil on canvas. And I thank everybody for joining me tonight. And 54 minutes. I got a legendary artist here, David Lloyd Glover. He's going to be live in studio. Matt. I've tried it both ways. I got to tell you, the artists that I bring here that are alive do a lot better than the dead ones I brought in. They didn't have much to say, Matt, even with our seance leader. Have you ever been to a seance, Matt? I went to one at the Magic Castle. They tried to get Harry Houdini to speak. You know what Harry said? Nothing. But that's unu not unusual. I don't know. He's been dead for quite a while. All right. I'll tell you what. How much, Ashley, I need to make a sale. This first hour owns me, Matt. Yeah, I'm going to get a ta tattoo someday. The first hour owns me. Actually, I'm going to get one with my d daughter. We're going to get a dual tattoo. Yeah, one of us, hopefully me, is going to be born to ride. And the other person, hopefully her, ride to kill. That's the 1960s. Easy, never mind. Yeah, all right. Ashley, we're using all the knowledge at your command, Ashley. You know what I paid for this. You know, Michael closed his studio. We cannot get any more landscapes for him. He's painted them. He loves it. He's 77. What would you how what would you open this at? Are you kidding me? Oh my goodness. Matt, do you see that? Matt, 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 follow me over here, Matt. She's trying to kill me. I don't have an affiliate. I just the internet. And you know what Ashley's going? Zero. Zero. Can I do like zero to open $24,000 increments? No. Zero to open $250 increments. On, you're never going to see a Schofield with that much tangerine in it. And you're not going to see many Schofields at all. He quit. I only have these four. I got four Schofields. Nobody opened on the first one. Retired. David, I like Michael. I've known him for 35 years. He was one of the first guests I ever brought on TV. Well, I used to call him the rascal because he would find a way. When everything was going right, he'd mess it up. I've never seen anybody like that. But the opposite is true. When everything was against him, where you're going, oh, man, he's not going to make it through this. He ends up swings it around and looks like a hero. So I am looking for an open. This was Ashley's idea, Matt, using all the knowledge at her command. Now, a lot of you know Ashley. She might even be 
giving me breaks tonight. Look at that. What color is that blue, David? Cobalt. Cobalt blue. Cobalt blue. 375 has been bid. This is cheap. I have no other Schofields. I'm not planning on getting any more. There are no more. He closed down his studio. Put a padlock. What's he going to do now? Write a book? About the art business? He's going to write a book. I might be in it. 375 going once. Now, folks, I can't buy a Michael Schofield for 375. You could triple it, and I can't get any more. He padlocked his studio. He's writing. He's done painting landscapes. He's 77. He's been painting him most of his life. I, I'm at 375. This this is an amazing. How much? 625 has been bid, folks. This is this is all you're gonna get. I mean, there, he quit. It's not like he hadn't painted since he was 12 years old, which he has. We are at 625, looking for 7875. Oh, folks, don't lose this one over a few hundred. Michael is very famous. His ability to paint the backs of trees blue, he is added to American landscape, and everybody knows it. He published some of the best selling posters. Uh, of all time, he also worked for Stephen J. Canal Productions. That's why you'll see his paintings on the Rockford Files, Mission Impossible, other s series done by Stephen J. Canal Productions. You go, that's a Schofield. And you go, yes, it is. Ah, this hurts. Going once. Oh, this hurts. Oh, my goodness, this first hour. Let's see. Yes, yeah, 625. Now, I hate to do this, Ashley. All right, Matt. I hate to do this. This takes away a lot of my energy, Matt. I'm going to have to do a chapel mind melt. No, it's not a patty melt. Uh, no, look at that, Juliet. No, this is a mind melt. Are you ready? This takes up all the energy. I haven't even had David Lloyd Glover up. Are you ready, Matt? This is a mind melt. All right, get ready. Because I am going to wheel, reel, will, will through the TV to you because this painting is a $25,000 masterpiece. One of the coolest ones ever. Ready, Matt? <laughs> That took a lot of energy. Now, if you're sitting at home and you felt an amazing jolt, that was a chapel mind melt. Whew. Lights dimmed. I'm going to give it a one minute clock here after that mind melt, and I can't get any more Schofields. Yeah. And if you want, I'll even sign the back. This is one of the nicest Schofields I have seen in the 25 years, 35 years I've worked with him. Going once, and I apologize to the bitter. Uh, did the bitter feel the chapel mind melt? Yeah, oh, I could put power out. You know, there could be some power outages. Yeah. <laughs> David Lloyd Glover saying his tires might have gone flat. All right, 850, going once. Ooh, that hurts.
Eight fifty. Eight what? Yeah, we're at eight fifty, right? Right, six twenty five. Six twenty five, my bad. It, we're at six twenty five looking for eight seventy five. Six twenty five going once. Six twenty five going twice. Fair and final warning. I'm not moving. I have no energy to move after that chapel mind melt. I don't even think Leonard Nimoy could keep up with that one. Oh, that took all my power, Ashley. I'm going to be a jellyfish the rest of the night. What are they saying, Ashley? Because... We're seeing. All right, we got Ashley on the phone. I've never expended that kind of energy, David, out of one mind melt. Whew. No, I can't now. Age has caught up to me. What are these? Yeah, oh, whew. What's that? Um, I was built for speed, not distance. <laughs> what do they say, Ashley? 875. 875? All right, we got it. Thank you. 875. Oh. Yeah, Michael, Michael will buy it back. I'm not selling it back because I used a mind melt on this. Yeah. Well, whoever buys it, they can sell it Yeah, 8.75 once, twice. Fair and final warning, sold. Mm. <laughs> All right. Here's what I got. Good catch, Chapel. All right. You got it, no, I got this. If you can grab the Glover. Yep. All right. This is one of Guillaume Agelet's greatest works ever. It's entitled Le Grand Circus. You are the circus conductor of your own life. He first published this in the 19, late 70s, early 80s. Guillaume Agelet is the king of the line. He is the youngest living artist to ever be accepted into the Bibliothèque Nationale, the permanent archival collection of the Louvre. Do you have the item number for this? 842. 842? 2842. Now, Matt, when you pan that, you're going to see thousands of lines that he scribed into a copper plate. He's got the acrobats. He's got a clown on a bicycle going on the tightrope. He's got horses. He's got gold leaf. Circus 2023. Handside Guillaume Agelet. This is an embossing line, which means this was started out as an etching. We use a ton of pressure. You use Barbarian limestone, and you scribe little lines in, and the limestone has permeability and porosity, which means it will absorb the black ink into the rock. Then you put the, a roller over it to push hard enough to get it to be absorbed into the paper. Once he did that, he then hand watercolored all those other colors. 
You are, you're, I would guess if there's not 15,000 lines in this that he etched, it's unbelievable. This is as good as it gets. I've seen the Grand Circus in some of the auctions go for eighteen to twenty-five thousand, and to have a one of one, basically an original Le Grand Circus, done in twenty twenty-three by Guillaume Agelet, unbelievable. Guillaume Agelet is a very, very famous. One of, he doesn't, he likes faces. He likes, here is one of his, he loves rock and roll stars too, like David, but this was an etching of Jimi Hendrix's face. It said US 75, then he lowered it to 45,000. I think they sold it for 45,000. Why? Because Guillaume Agelet is the youngest living artist to ever be accepted into the Louvre. Seven of his pieces are in the Louvre. Here is gold winner skater Scott Hamilton. He did an ice skating piece 30 years ago. Scott Hamilton loved it. You've made me a big fan. Scott Hamilton. Here, they call this an original, it's not, but they want 12,500 11 years ago. Do what? Can you see it now? You telling me my elbow is too big? It wasn't 12 minutes ago. You know why the elbow grew, Matt? That chapel mind melt. Oh, the consequences. Oh, no, yeah, it's going to be severe. Here is the music curator of the Louvre accepting Camargue, which is a horse. And it's funny because it was never called that till Guillaume did it was in the Camargue region. Now they've adopted that name for a certain type of horse uh, because of Guillaume. This is the Louvre except in Camargue, artist proof, and Andine, artist proof, into the Bibliothèque Nationale. I saw this a long time ago from the Smithsonian. It's called Master Classes at the Louvre. This lady working on her PhD there, she's got to have the same intent and brush strokes. I don't know if that's a Ruben. Who is she painting there, David Lloyd Glover? Some of these, some of these big paintings. She could also be painting an Agile because he is in the permanent archival collection of the Louvre. Look at his list of collectors here. And I got a nice letter from Ronald Reagan to show. Ronald Reagan bought a piece called Encounters, and he wrote Guillaume back. So this is one of my favorite pieces of our art. It was two horses frolicking together. Look at that. Ronald Reagan, the king of Morocco, because Guillaume Agelet was born in Morocco. The prince of Morocco. Yitzhak Novin, former president of Israel, Anwar Sadat, late president of Egypt. You go down there, you got Nelson Rockefeller, you got everybody. And that was in his day, he became very famous. This is at least 25 grand, maybe more. It's probably one of the only ones he did in 2023. It's, it's virtually an original. And I don't know how many different figures you can see but look at the conductor look at that horse pulling back i like this little guy i do not have the manual dexterity to be one of the people on the trapeze but if you if you electric powered the bike i could do that
You ever ro rode a bike on a tight uh, tightrope, David? No, I don't think I tried. Oh, you're missing out on so much. Did you do it? No. <laughs> Grand Canyon? Was that you? No, that wasn't me. Uh, no, that was Evil Knievel, Robert Crane Knievel. So here's what I'm going to do. I got a $25,000 Legrand Circus. And is that the right item number to me? So starting at zero has not worked out well for me because this first hour hates me. At night, Matt, this first hour lays in bed and goes, how can we get Barry? How, 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 how? I want to crush him. That's what, who runs the first hour? Who runs the internet? No, no, because somebody wants to. Crush me. Yeah, Al Gore. Yeah, he runs it. He invented it. All right, I'll tell you what. I'm going to give somebody a deal of a lifetime. Only one I have, Le Grand Circus. Basically, Guillaume Ajoulé is telling people, as crazy as life gets, you are the conductor of your own life. This is you. you got to keep everything in balance and live your life the best you can. Tell you what I'm going to do. This is so cheap, Ashley. Oh, it's a one on one original. It's too cheap, Ashley. I have, I, have, I have records from 10 years ago when he sold the number one of a different edition. That went for 29000 at an auction house. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Because this is the first hour, and the first hour hates me. $1,200 to open. $200 increments once we get to $1,200. There are thousands of lines. Guillaume Agelet has never used a ruler in his life. I've watched him etch. I've watched him draw. Absolutely amazing. Look at all those lines. Look at that. You're talking about a two inch square area. How many lines would you say are there, Matt? Two, three, four hundred just in that two inches? It's a circus that you are your own conductor of. Twelve hundred to open. The Grand Circus. Yeah. And you got the item number, right? Okay. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. 12 would have been fair, but this first hour hates me. It's hand-to-hand -hand combat. David, you, you just saw me expel eight or 9,000 calories on my chapel mind melt. That was four days of, of calorie intake, just. But, no, 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 no. I, <laughs> uh, Tell you what, get me close. Call me up, ladies and gentlemen. And if they're nice to our operators, Patty, here's what I'm going to do. Person who makes the fairest offer, not only am I going to sell it to them, if they want me to frame it, I will frame it and pay for shipping too. And shipping is getting ungodly expensive lately. Tell you what, I have no beef with her, but she's, shut up, Chapel. Don't make any enemies. Did you hear Janet Yellen speak today about inflation? Yeah, it's great. The CPI, consumer price, should be the CPL, consumer price lie. You know what they don't count in the consumer price index, David? Besides food and fuel, which you all need to live on? Taxes. Taxes are not put into the CPI. 
which are 40% for so many people everywhere. They tax you state, local. I'll tell you what. Call me up, folks. Camera, whatever. I, uh, I'm just curious who's watching me. Um, call me up. Make me an offer. I'm going to frame it, ship it. This is La Grande Circus, probably Guillaume Agelet's second best work. Itsy Bitsy uh, from a genie's bottle. What comes out, the whole universe. Here, is he's telling you you're the, the, the conductor of your own life. Make me some offers. Call me. We're getting lonely. Does it show me how many people are watching me on the internet right now? Okay. Well, that's enough for somebody to call me up and say, Barry, yeah, I know you wanted 1,200. Michael Schofield? Michael, hi, yeah. If Michael's watching, hey, David Glover's been mad mouthing you, Michael. Hi, Cleo. Make me an offer on La Grande Circus. If you if I frame this right, which I will, this will all pop out. But look at that. That's hand watercolor, pastel, hand gold leaf. Everything done there by Guillaume Agelet, youngest living artist to ever be accepted into the Bibliothèque Nationale. Any offers? Cleo. Michael. I can move on. I just want to see. Because I got a number in my head, Ashley, that's so cheap. I might even whisper it. I might even show it to you. Do you know Pig Latin? Yeah. A day, ah, but I know. I don't know it anymore. I know a little German. <laughs> Ashley, here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to turn my mic off. If you call Ashley, I'm going to lower this for a, one special person. And... Lower it to Ashley. First person calls Ashley, you're going to get one heck of a deal. And I thank you for tuning in. Oh, I got. I got a paint. I got a drawing of from Barbara Eden, who David Lloyd Glover bumps into all the time. She's ninety. Sold. Sold? Thank you. That's secret, top secret price. <laughs> Made it go bye bye. That's Ashley. She's going to be hosting a little bit tonight. They're watching. They're watching there. Yeah. Oh. Whew. I didn't have enough to start with, David. Yeah. I mean. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, there's power outages. This is the Marquette to Aquarius from Guillaume Azulay's Zodiac Suite. And just to show you what Guillaume Azulay, I just want to show you because I got a copy of his Zodiac Suite. Nine years ago, somebody was selling it on art brokerage for 21000 for a silk screen for each one. This is the original drawing. And I just want to show you. Here is Art International from 1986. And you turn to th oh, right there. As you lay.
all done with lines. Now, here are some of the most amazing Azulay. Was born in Casablanca, Morocco in 1949. Self-taught, age 13, was sketching and selling drawings on the street. Hiked across Europe at age 14. He caught a ride, this is a true story, with a circus at age 14. <laughs> yeah, here is one of my favorite drawings he did with just his line work and all that graphic background in black. Buster Keaton, an original pen and ink, 9500 that would have been a steal. That sold in 2015, $9,500. Here is... Camargue State 2 etching. This is 2009. What is that? 20, let's see, 2010. It would be 13, 14 years ago. $16,000. Now, I don't know if a lot of you go to the, the horse track, but look at this. Here is Kentucky Derby Festival poster. Thousands of artists entered and Guillaume Agile won the official Kentucky Derby poster. This is a while ago, but they selected him. Look at this right here. Now, I want you to look at this. Here is Zodiac Mini Portfolio. $21,991. And I printed this in 2009. Here's another letter from the Louvre. Oh, here's a letter from Ronald Reagan right here. Look at that. Encounters uh, is the most welcome piece to my art collection. Here is Silkscreen called La Vista Continues. Look at that. 25,000. That's Humphrey Bogart. What was that movie? Casablanca. Yeah, with Humphrey Bogart. Now take a look at this. Take a look at this. That is Aquarius. That is the original Marquette. When you get that portfolio for 21000 there's an Aquarius in it. Just one that was an etching would be 10, 12 grand. This is the original drawing right here. This is the original drawing that he used to create Aquarius. Ashley, what did I pay for this? Because this, I mean, Eight, nine years ago, this would have been 35000 40000 hands down. Yeah. Here's what I'm going to do. On Aquarius. I do not hurt me too bad. Look at that. And he even, he signs it. Marquette, the date, everything. Use and the copper plate to make the etching is what he wrote on the bottom. All right. Don't hurt me too bad. What do you think, Ashley? 1500 to open? I mean, this is the original. That's a Marquette. That's the original drawing. It's like when... How many, how many originals do you think there were to the Mona Lisa? Did he do, you know, because that took him like 20 years of working on it. 10 years. I don't know if they had pencils with erasers back then. How would you erase in the 1500s, 1400s? All right, I mean, at 1200, I'm giving it away. That's the original drawing. Yeah, that's it. Come on in there. Marquette. Use for the copper plate for the etching. Oh, this is rare, rare. 
This is beef tartare, Matt. You ever had beef tartare? I love it. It's raw meat. I love it. It's easier on your digestion system. Did you know that, Matt? Yeah. Raw meat is easier for your digestive system. I don't know if that's true because I just made it up. But I don't know. I like raw meat. I used to eat raw hamburger meat and I put accent on it. <laughs> All right. I tell you what I'm going to do. Retail on something like this at least 35000 all right, list price thirty-five thousand. Adrian, we're going to sell this right now. List is thirty-five thousand. Watch this. I got an idea. All right, I, I'm going to try Juliet here. Juliet, this is Ashley did it. Juliet, using all every ounce of the knowledge at your command. Forgetting about what you did to Romeo. Forgetting about digging him up late at night and putting little parts in little different places. Forget about all that. Using all, every ounce of knowledge, just like I did a Chapel Mind Melt, a Juliet, something of force. Where would you, what would you, where would you start on something like this? Because I'm, I'm asking Juliet, what are you thinking? Matt, can you hand me Patty's gun? Because you're killing me. I, I, you. Oh my gosh. Now she asks, what's cost? She yells out 750. Then she looks at Ashley, what's cost? It's like, oh my gosh. All right. This is Juliet's auction, seven fifty to open, one hundred dollar increments. This is rare. Hey, what, 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 what month if you are an Aquarius? January, February. Late January, early February. If someone was born in the zodiac sign of Aquarius, when were they born? You are right, between January 20th and February 18th. You got an offer? Now hang on, I like offers. It's too cheap, but who made that offer? Mr. S? All right, Mr. S, Mr. S, I'll tell you what, uh, come to me, Mr. S, I'm going to make you a deal. If you come up, I'll just sell it to you, come up $230, and what I will do for you, Mr. S, when you get mad at somebody and you need a chapel mind melt. You just tell me their name, Mr. S. You just let me know and I'll give them a mind melt that will knock them backwards. What's that? You got an open? At 750. Thank you. Oh, let's not. Oh, Juliana, you got as lucky. I haven't seen that much luck. Since she buried Romeo in the mud, seven fifty. Looking for eight fifty. What, what kind of increments did I say? What? I don't know what's on the screen. How much? I didn't. Oh, I didn't say. Make it a hundred dollars. Seven fifty. Looking for eight fifty. And whoever gets it, I will give them a free enemy mind melt. Whoever gets it, they just got to tell me who they want to straighten out. Give me their name and what state. And uh, Matt, come back to me earlier tonight. He, he, well, I'll give him a nice mind melt. 
Yeah, I'll give you something nice to whoever you want me to. What? I can do that. I have a funny feeling they're already doing it to us. They got some serious mind melting people over there. All right, 750, going once. Well, who's got it? Who's got the bid? I thought she had it. Okay, 750 going once, 750 going twice. All in, all said, sold. All right. Juliet, here, I'm going to let you, I'm going to hand you this, Juliet. Because, yeah, you got some good, all right. Tell you what I'm going to do because, oh, I got to, hey, where's my Royal? Yes. Thank you, Mr. S, and I will I will give a mind melt wherever he wants it. Whew. I got so lucky, David, because a lot of times when I offer a mind melt, they say, I want to hit the mega millions. And that takes a lot of energy, yeah. Don't get it all up. You might want to get it. No, I'm, yeah, I'm going to. Oh, you know, and after Thanksgiving, me and my dog, Ginger, it was not as good as I thought it would. We went dumpster diving for leftovers. And, and my neighbors are really cheap. There was nothing good there. I found a little cat toy for Ginger. Yeah. Oh, I found some, I found some stuffing and dressing. I just had to brush some stuff off of it. It was good. This is Jose Royo. This piece is number 80 of 85. It is called Soul. And if you look into her eyes, Jose Royo is a master Spanish painter born in Spain. His paintings are hundreds of thousands of dollars. And what he did was he put pastel with his own hands on this piece. Number 80 of 85, I had some rare retails right here, 12, well here, let me just show you. The price of Royos has gone crazy. This is El Campo. I used to sell that. This is from 2014. Someone was on eBay at 8500 That's now nineteen five in galleries. Here is Mediterraneo. Uh, this is a 2014 comp. When I bought out so many of the Royal Collection, uh, I used to sell this. Now it's 18500 on Park West. Here is... A similar piece right here, La, La Jolla, and this is 18 years ago. It was 4,500 and 3,000. Now you can double or triple that. Here is one of my favorites. I had one hanging in my own house that I sold on TV. Cali Mayorca, 8,000. That's 19,000 now. And look at this. This is from the Golden Collection. It was four paintings. Look at that. I used to sell that so cheap. Now they want $10,000 on art brokerage. So I'll tell you what. Ashley, I'm going to, I don't know if I should ask. Oh, Jose Royo, born in Valencia, Spain in 1945. Um, oh, this is, it's like 8,500, nine grand now. Matt, they only made 80 of them. And Jose Royo hand pasteled it. He's considered one of the greatest Spanish painters of all time. He's in so many of the national galleries of Spain. 
Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this so cheap. All right, Patty, you haven't hit one yet. All right, where should I start an auction on this? No, you got to use all the knowledge of your command. Did you see? Did you see all the energy I put into that mind melt? All right, now using all. All right, Patty is chickening out, making Juliet do it again. Ju what? Oh, it goes to you. What? Matt? Matt, did you see what she just did, Matt? Matt, she just said this. I'm going to tell you all right now. <laughs> David? Yeah. Hey, everybody? We're here, we're here. Matt? I'm surrounded by assassins. I could go at any time. I'm surrounded by assassins. Say it a little louder. Where do you want me to start? Zero to open. Zero. All right, now you got to use all your knowledge. I don't mind losing. Yeah, I do, but I don't want to lose on any what. Started zero, two hundred dollar increments. It went back to Ashley. David, if someone was born in nineteen forty-five, how old is he today? Seventy-eight. But Royal's still alive. I believe he is. Did you kill him? <laughs> now he was born in Valencia, Spain, in 1945. How, how do you say it? Valencia. Now let's hypothetically say he was born. On December 13th, how old is he now? And he's currently in Spain. He'd be a year older. Oh, you're kidding me, Ashley. You started this at zero, $200 increments. I got a six, seven, eight thousand dollar. Jose Royo, Spanish artist. I know what you're thinking, David. Royo's publisher, one of his publishers died. What? Yeah. No open once, Ashley. Giuliani could become the champ, even though she killed Romeo. No hard time at all, Matt. I, I'm not saying we should throw her in jail. Do you want me to let it go or throw you in jail? All right, zero. I got an $8,000 Royo where he hand pastelled the bow in her hair and, and other places on the piece. No open once. Oh. To what? No. Zero. To to quote Marlon Brando in Apocalypse Now. Ashley, you know what this means for you? The horror. The horror. We are at zero. The horror, Ashley. We have 200. Thank you. Now, I, if I bought this at 200, I'd say it's a break even, but I paid a lot more. And Ashley knows that. 
Yeah, well, and also that, that Jose Royo. The signatures yeah, look at the signature. Look at the numbering. All done by Jose Royo. Two hundred dollars. Four hundred has been bid. Oh, if they frame this in gold, it'd be unbelievable. He's one of the most valuable artists ever. I got yelled at by his publisher, a guy named Ira Shore helped me get him. And I made a, yeah, made a presentation and I told him about the Spanish Museum. He said, but you got it wrong, you got it wrong. And I said, that's exactly what Ira told me. He's going, so why are you yelling at me? And I was right. But anyway, yeah. I'm at 400. This is $8,000. Do you see this right here? This is all hand pasteled right there by Jose Royo. Look at this. Look where he adds it right there. I shouldn't even touch it. Beautiful signature. What? It's perfect. it's perfect. Going once. Wow. So, 40. Patty is didn't get a bid. That's better than 29. losing money. Juliet is the winner so far. All right. Where am I at? We are at 400. Mr. M, this is definitely worth it. Oh, that's some great stuff tonight. And you get a booklet with every David Lloyd Glover you buy. Going once at $400. This hurts. Let me see. Oh, 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 this is killer. Going twice. All in. All said. Ugh. Make that sound, Patty. That sound when your phone rings. <laughs> yes. Look at this. Guillaume Agelet, self-taught, born in Casablanca, Morocco. Look at that. There we go. What's the item number on this, Ashley? These are twelve to fourteen thousand or more. What is it? Two eight four three. Matt, you will notice. It says one of one. Level de Sol. 2023. Hand signed by Guillaume Agelet. Youngest living artist to ever be accepted in the permanent archival collection of the Louvre. And the Louvre is a great museum. I've been to the Louvre. I'll tell you the museum I like more than the Louvre, David. I don't want to get myself in trouble. Hermitage in St. Petersburg. Just because I got to touch paintings. La Dance, you know, by Matisse. I touched it so hard it moved. And there were Russian guards around that they just weren't looking. No, they didn't send me anything. I just... No, 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 no. That's a huge painting. It, it means sunrise? Thank you. Did someone tell you that or did you look it up on your phone? Google. Yeah. I like Google. You know why I like Google? Because I got a Gmail account. All right, here we go. One of one, a unique original. Look at that. He's also hand watercolor it. I didn't know that. Ashley. Patty, yeah. Juliet, look at this. Those pinks, those blues, they've all, that's watercolored. Then he hand gold leafed it. It's a serigraph for the black lines. Then he hand, oh, this is why. 
is 24,000 in the guide, in Print World Guide. 24,000, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. <coughs> and I'm running out of time. I got like three minutes. I'm bringing David Lloyd Glover up here. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm a hello, Dish. Hi, Dish. Barry Chapel coming to you live. Thank you for tuning in. Would you call that bloody the first hour? The, the internet beat me. Man, they beat me. Patty, they pounded me with a stick. That hurt. And they're still watching. Yeah, they're still watching, but Dish is here to help. I've never seen Juliet cry like that. It was like when you found out Romeo was gone, but never mind. I'm going to leave it. Let it go. She said, let it go. Hey, Matt, Matt, do you think she had anything to do with Romeo's? Do you think so? Yeah. Definitely. Okay. David, be careful. She's only three feet away from you. All right, here's what I'm going to do. This is hand watercolored, hand lay gold. It's a silk screen. You can see the outline was silk screened. I'll tell you what, you got about a $25,000 Azule here. One of one, meaning it's a unique original. Tell you what, I will open at $1,000 to open, $200 increments once we get it. This is one of the most colorful. Actually, now what's going to happen, Matt, as, as you walk around your house and you walk around the painting, it changes before your eyes. That's the beauty of gold on a painting. And he is the youngest living artist to be ever accepted. Now, he's, he's older now, but at the time, he was the youngest living artist to be accepted in the permanent archival collection of the Louvre. Oh, that's so cheap, and I want to thank everybody. That is so cool. I don't have much room in this because it's a one of one by Guillaume Ajoulet. If I'll tell you what, call Ashley, get us close. 1,000 to, to open, yes. Who are you talking to? I was, I was asking, what is, what is your oh. Uh. Hey, Matt. Matt. Bring the camera in here a second. I don't want to get anybody in trouble, but you're here all the time, right, Matt? Is she talking? Are the voices back? You know what? You know, like before? When she would be, she'd just be sitting here. She looks so calm. She'd be sitting next to Juliet, and she'd go, shut up. And I'd go, what? And I said, what happened? She says, didn't you hear that? I said, I heard the shut up. Anyway, never mind. Here we go. No open once. Get me close, and this can be yours. All right, Ashley, I am going to. I hear someone calling. I know, they're just commenting on your comments. <laughs> Am I what? Uh, they're just commenting on your comments. Well, I'm sure it's at least 4% accurate. Everything is 4% accurate. Well, folks, hi. Barry Chapel coming to you live. Primetime Shopping Network. I want to bring up an artist that is so famous, so smart, has been painting and has done some of the most amazing paintings in the world. He painted in Japan when Art Brilliance was at the top of their game. He's painted for museums. What was that last race car you painted uh, in a museum? Was that oh, a Mer yes, the uh, Mercedes. M Mercedes. Uh, 300 yeah. SLR. Oh, he 1955. 
1955. Sterling Moss drove it to victory. Sterling Moss. Yes. Drove it to victory. Well, we're going to talk about all that and more. Let's put a big hand for David Lloyd. Oh, okay. Yeah, come on up here, David. Greetings. Hello, right. Barry. Hello, folks. We're all here. You look like Johnny Cash. Man jo yeah, in black. the man in black. You know, I met him once. Did you? And he was all in black. From, all right. from the top of his hair down to his boots. And he's big. I mean, he was, I mean, he's not now, but he's he passed. But now, he was yeah. a tall guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the man in black. He had yeah. quite a voice on him. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. an intense. What an intense look that he had. Yeah. Did he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, well, David, now, how long have you been painting? I've been painting, actually, since 1956. I remember when I started. <laughs> uh, I, my grandmother got me started because she gave me a gift of an oil paint set, like a whole box, all the colors, all the brushes, the turpentine, the linseed oil, and some canvases, and I went crazy. Did you? Oh, yeah. I, I couldn't wait. And you've been painting ever since? Ever since, yeah. Now, a lot of people, i gotta, I got to tell you this, he was born in a different country. You were born north of the border. Yes, I was, north of the 49th parallel yeah. uh, in Victoria, British Columbia. Yeah, beautiful place. And uh, Which is really a British, yeah. emphasis on British. Yeah. On oh, Bank British Island. Columbia, yeah. Yeah, very British. And, uh, yeah, I, I was trained How did trained you get there. from British Columbia down to uh, L.A.? Da down to Los Angeles. Actually, it was a gallery in Los Angeles that uh, asked me to come down and uh, do an artist in residence program where I'd be here for three months and I would do paintings of Southern California and then they would do a, a special show, an exhibition for me, and I never left. <laughs> you know? Now, how old were you when that happened? Uh, 38. And you're 74 now. Yes, that's right. Yeah, so... Uh... And you never left, huh? I never left Los Angeles. I mean, I went back to organize, but I, I stayed here permanently. Yeah, now you, I mean, you used to work for Art Brilliance. Yes, that, that was a discovery. And, and, and is it safe to say, even though they didn't share with the artist, but there's a good chance some of your paintings went for two, three, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah I uh, discovered them. Well, I learned that they were the largest art seller, art gallery network in all of Asia. Wow. Nobody could top them. And they, at the time that I started with them on contract, they had 28 galleries. And if you have a gallery location in Japan, and you know, real estate was like out of oh, yeah. sight, yeah. the rent on these galleries was just incredible. But they had a showroom in Tokyo, in the Shibuya area, which is the, probably the biggest, the busiest corner on the, yeah. the planet. They had a huge gallery on three levels, right at the corner oh. of, of the famous five corners. And the Disney store was above them, the big Disney, uh, and so Disney's a big order, deal there. So in Japan, uh, you know, they're priced in yen, obviously. Oh, yeah. But... When you converted, it would not surprise you if many of your Art Brilliance paintings went for over $100,000. Oh, yes, they did, easily. Easily. I, I learned how to read Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> so I could look, see in reverse, and I could read what the prices were. Well, they, they didn't know I knew oh, yeah, what they were really? selling for. I mean, they believe me, they took care of me nicely, but wow, yeah. that was something else. Well, he was telling me uh, that his art in Japan was considered dowry A dowry, dowry worthy. Which means that when you're getting ready, you, you as someone marrying a girl, you gotta give their family. This is the, whose family gives who? You go to the father of, the, of your intended bride, your yeah. fiance, and you ask for a hand in marriage. But in order for him to say, yes, I bless you with that, you have to show him an original oil painting that you own an original oil painting because if you don't you're not worthy ah so all these young uh, executives in in tokyo and all the other cities in japan had to save up and come to one of these shows and to buy, buy an original glover oil painting and that was dowry worthy oh it was dowry worthy so a smart guy would have moved to japan had like nine or ten or twelve daughters 
And so yeah, he was collecting. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, when they bought a painting of mine, it was all beautifully framed and whatever. Oh, it, yeah. it came with a velvet sleeve that they would zip up, a uh, velvet sleeve. Then it went into a custom box with a lid, and they put a lock on it, and they would deliver that to your home. Wow. From the gallery. They really give you the combination of the key, right? Oh, yeah, you got, got a key, but uh, it was quite a, uh, quite a fanfare. Well, I want you to tell me, because I've been captivated uh, by a lot of paintings, but this one right here, this is just... This, you start talking about a $100,000 painting. Yes. Egyptian this oil painting. garden. Egyptian garden. And, you know, you, you look at the... Uh, 2847. 2847. 2847. Yeah, the, the little garden sculpture on top of the plinth here and the, the spring uh, tulips. Oh, they, they would go crazy for this in uh, Japan. It's very zen. Zen Buddha. Yeah, Zen Buddha. You know, you got the urn with the flowers in the background. Look at this. This is oil and canvas. And an our brilliance auction. This is well over 100. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, beautiful. I, th I think this is 20, 18 by 24 inches. And this was painted in... Uh, 1998. Look at all the search you get on this. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it's been exhibited, so it's got its uh, stickers. It was exhibited in uh, in a special Asian, so there's Japanese in one of the, one of the labels. Wow, that, that's the title in Japanese. Well, there's a this is one that I've just been looking at since I knew you were coming. But there's one. Can, I don't. I don't want anybody to trip. But you see that one? Yes. Yeah. Bring. Yeah. Put that one up. And I want to show you something. Look at this. Okay. And I'm going to put this one back here. There you go. Now, do you know what this is? What this is a scene of? No. Savannah, Georgia. Really? And in Georgia, and you know, along the East Coast there, they grow rhododendrons naturally. And rhododendrons don't grow in California. You've never they seen don't? anything like No, they don't. Because we don't have the moisture in the soil. And wow. rhododendrons, like there's many, many rhododendrons there. You know, a blossom is about this big. Each ball of, of really? flowers, yeah. So actually, this is kind of a large scene. These are azaleas in the background, the rhododendrons. They start blooming in the south around April. So late March, early April, they start popping, and they go through April, May, June, and by the end of June, they, they, their season is over. Wow, that's amazing painting. Well, let me ask you two questions. One, can you say rhododendron three times real fast? <laughs> I don't know if I could try. No, okay. <laughs> rhododendron, rhododendron, rhododendron. You, you know what we call them in Canada? We're rhodos. Rodos. Just call them for short, yeah, because rhododendron was kind of a mouthful. But second rodos. thing is, can you spell rhododendron? Yes. Spell. A R H O D O D E N D R O N. That's correct. Good. You know I that. have no idea. Yeah. I can't spell. But it's R H rodo. Yeah. Rodo. Rhododendrons. They grow in my hometown, Victoria and Vancouver. They now, now, you've been in many galleries. Would you be surprised if this was a gallery in the United States? Let's see the date on this. I think this 2005. is... 2005. 2005, yeah. In a gallery in America, 45, 50,000, 35? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. You, you know, um, this and the one you showed before, uh, I I went to my, um, my vault. I have a oh. vault. And I was looking for early paintings, early? Just, just for your show. Well, thank you. And the, these are gems from uh, the days past. gone by. Yeah. Yeah. Well, can you pull up this 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 uh, this famous? Oh no, this guy. Oh, this guy. Yeah. Oh yes, Julius. That's Julius. Julius Caesar. Oh, put that sticker back on there. Look An at another this. garden statue. Where did you see this garden statue? I saw this in 
this was New York. These are zinnias. Yeah, this was New York. Yeah, it's even got, here's your Art Brilliant sticker. Yeah. Yeah. It fell off. Oh. Yeah, the big zinnia balls here. And this is the, uh, the crisscross of, of the fencing. Actually, you can see through there. Now, when you painted this, yeah. you do a lot of plain air painting where you paint. Or did you paint this in your studio? What did you do with this one? I drew a sketch. I, I like this this particular bust and the way it was positioned with these flowers. So I did a quick sketch, and then I went into the studio. This is a studio finish painting. Oh, okay. But based upon my earlier drawings. Well, this is a real color exercise too. You get the the purples and the magentas. That's stunning, David. This is a driveway no one wants. <laughs> that would be a hard driveway to park in. Where is this? Ah, yes. This is in the south of England, in the Garden District. Wayside House. Wayside House. Yeah, and you're going, you can see, you can tell that you're at the top of a hill and you're coming down and driving past the front of the home. And look at the little garden they have here. They've got flower pots. They got bedding flowers. They got shrubs. They got. How old of a house do you think that is? Houses in England can be like 1700s, yeah. you know, 1800s. Two, three hundred years old. Yeah, the the found the basic bones of the house are very old. In that time period, how many cars, horse and buggies or something yeah. ran off that road into that house? Yeah, okay. <laughs> came tumbling down the hill. And look at this tree. It had a big old tree there. Oh, look at I just that. love the gnarled branches that were overhanging. And, and you saw this in England, and you yes, just said, that's I'm going to sketch it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, look at the tree branches in here. I mean, everything is so old there. It's incredible. But, oh. look, but look at the colors and the dimension. and the, yeah, You can see the, the sunlight on the hills, you know. Well, I took my kids there to Bovey Castle mm -hmm. in Bovey, England, and uh, they're so, uh, I, I like how, very proper. Very proper. What, which painting is this? Well, I orange call it flowers. Or, Orange Flowers. But it, this is an arbor, you know, and there's... Uh, Actually, it's not in season, so the, uh, the the wisteria that was growing over here is now uh, past Look its season. Look at this. How many different flowers, man. Yeah. So you know your flowers. Yeah. Yeah, you, you get to learn. A lot of texture in this. Where was this? England. England. Yes. Oh, they, they got some tremendous gardens there in Kent and Stowe and beautiful. Oh, they put a lot in. Look at that. What kind of, look at that. That bush. Oh, yeah, all the shrubs. It took me an hour yeah. and a half just yeah. to even sketch it. Yeah. What kind of bush is that? All the shrubs. They, they shrubs. have so many different kinds of shrubs and bedding plants and flowers. And everything there is so old. Well, I got one more I want to show. Them. We're gonna, we got that one right there. Where is that cottage? Aha. Uh -huh. Well, it says right in the title. This is East Grove, England. East Pop. Grove? East Grove. And, and, and the title is Garden at East Grove Cottage. And that's a real thatched roof cottage. Yeah, and, and the home itself is actually not that large. You know, it, w it wasn't that big. It really is a cottage, but it... It's a two-story, and you can see the uh, little bay window there. That's Did open. you know that? Because if you just pull up in front of one of these British families' home and yeah. start sketching, do they get? Do they go, sir? What are you doing? No, they say, oh, would you like some tea? Yeah, <laughs> would you like a cup of tea? Oh, and, it's beautiful. Yeah, and they look at what you're doing. And they, oh, that's lovely, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> that's lovely. <laughs> so. In a big show here in the United States, the gallery, 45, 55, 60,000. Yeah, that's and, right. All right. And, and this is, just before you put that one, I'm, I think this is 19, 13, 16, 19, 2000, 2006. 2006. This painting has not been seen since 2006. Oh, it's been well, in my vault. 
It's one of your favorites. Yes. Okay. Well, let me, this one is one of my favorites right here. The Day's End. Good Where old. is that? Well, this is California. Okay. Yeah. And that's the, the California hazy light at, at the end of the day. Well, folks, look at that. That's stunning. That cloud. Yep, it's a it's a building. It's it's at a winery in Napa, and that's uh, just you know one of the service buildings for the winery. That's unbelievable sky. Well, well, well folks, here's what I'm gonna do. Um, camera two, call me. Uh, I got a few more to show. I'll tell you what, I gotta show that one right there, right there, because okay. that one's gonna probably. That is just staring at me. And folks, call me up. We'll open auctions on these. I got the best prices on TV. And you are talking to David Lloyd Glover. Uh, one of the best on the planet. This one is fairly recent. But I think it's about uh, 2000. 21. 2021, yeah. Where is this? This is in, uh, it's called Bourne, Bourne. Texas, B O E R N E, Born Texas. Born Texas. And what's Born Texas famous for are blue bonnets. Oh. The blue bonnets come out in the, in the spring. And, and, and this painting is done, this is uh, acrylic with palette knife. There's no, no uh, paintbrush, no, no oh, bristle okay. brush used in this. This is done with a blade, a knife. <laughs> So all, all the paint is applied by a knife. Palette knife. Palette knife, yeah. That's, that takes you a while to learn how to do that. Yeah, that's right. I, I like doing palette knife once in a while. Well, 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 folks, here's what I want you to do. Camera two, um, call me up. I want to sell a few of these right now. And there's more. Juliet, which one? Or, oh, we got a few more, but call me up if you've seen one. Okay. This one? Or the one? The cottage? Eastbourne Cottage? This one? Is oh, it this one? Going. Or do you want the cottage up? Uh, right. This is the day's end. And then. Oh, oh, I see which one. This is it. Garden at East. Eastport. That's the one. Is that it, Julia? Uh, is that one up? That's original? Oh, yes. Yeah, they're, yes they're, all original. they're all originals. They're paintings. I'll tell you what I can do, too. Because these, these are... These are thirty and 40000 in galleries, but here's what I'm going to do, Juliet. Juliet, who do you have online? All right, I'll tell you what. I want to. I thank you for calling so quickly. Here's what I'm gonna do. In a gallery, it's costing twenty, thirty grand. We're not in a gallery. Here's what I'm gonna do, Juliet. What do you think, Ashley? I want to. Uh, here's a deal, Juliet. I can do uh, fourteen hundred open. If anybody's interested in this, I just threw out a low ball price, fourteen hundred to open, which is crazy. Yeah, comes with a certificate. It comes with a certificate, of everything, and a book. And a book. Oh yeah, you get one of these books. We'll with sign them. We'll sign a little book for them. We'll sign a little book, fourteen hundred to yeah. open, two hundred dollar increments. So they they'll get a, a dedication in the book. You, oh, they'll get everything. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll personalize it. Now here I signed it, but I'll personalize it to the. Uh, and somebody. To the owner of the new painting. 
told me something I am supposed to talk to you about. Give me a second. Yeah, yeah a lot of stories in this painting. You can just oh. imagine. Uh, well, tell them. Yeah. Well, visiting the lady that owned the, the house. I was out here painting. You can see the picket fence right by the gate. Michael yeah. McCain uh, sent a message. He, you're supposed to, he said to say something to you. Okay. But I, I can't pull it up because I could go on Facebook Messenger to do it. But he, he was just ragging a little bit. He loves your work. Thank you, Michael, if you're, if you're watching. Anybody open on this? Okay. See, the thing about a painting like this is that, you know, they, they tell stories to you. And every time you come and look at the painting, every day, depending on what time of the day it is, you're, you'll find something new in it. Well, this right here, the day's end. At the winery. The right winery, but yeah. look at this. And, and you, you know what's great by what you're doing by putting it on TV like this is that you're bringing an art gallery out to you know, thousands and thousands of people. Right hey, in their house. Have you ever been in an art gallery where you walk in and, and immediately they're on to you and they can tell if you know anything about art? And, yeah. You know, and you feel intimidated. Oh. You, know, you, you don't know what to do or how to make a decision. on. So you end up running out of the gallery because you don't want to be bothered. But this way you can look at paintings brought right to you. Well, I'll tell you what. I got a special price on this. The days in retail, that's got to be thirty-five, forty thousand. 40000 I mean, David Lloyd Glover sold for Art Brilliance. You used to have pictures of him with the former chairman. Yeah. Have Art Brilliance. You're in, how many museums are in? What, what are those car museums? Eh? Newport Car Museum, yeah, at Portsmouth, Rhode Island. Yeah. That's a 150,000 square foot showroom. I'm the only artist on display with my All murals. All right. Well, this is item number BC2859. 2854. What? Two, he has it. Okay. Well, here's what I want to do. Oh, I got to sell a Glover, and this it's one of my favorites. Yeah. Mm. Ashley, what would you do right here? I need to take a sale in 18 right now. Throw inches. out a price, Ashley, that nobody watching us could absolutely say no to. Throw out a price where they got a date. That is a gorgeous. That's a forty thousand dollar David Lloyd yeah. Glover. You're trying to kill me. Surrounded by assassins, David. Whoa. All right, I'm gonna yell that one time. Should I? She says open it at twelve hundred. Wow. That's I'm losing a... money, Ashley. Twelve hundred to open. Two hundred dollar increments once we get the open. California winery. California Napa winery. Napa Valley. Yeah. And that is is that a oil or acrylic? That's acrylic. Acrylic on canvas. Yep, yeah, it was done right on the spot. How long does it take you when you plain air like that? you touch it up when you get home? So, sometimes, yeah. Because, you know, the, the problem you're having with capturing a sky like this, if you look and watch a sunset, you know how quickly yes. those clouds change. You know, what, what looks like red then becomes purple and what looks like dark blue. You have to paint very quickly. Yes. And, and then have a memory of what it was because you're going to finish it off back in the studio. Now, Matt... We have a docudrama on David Lloyd Glover. Do we still have that? We're checking. Because that docudrama really... Yeah, yeah, that was very well done. You, you produced I'm, that a few years ago. Uh, you love all your paintings, but is there a painting here where you go, I nailed that, I always give it my all, but one that I go, I shouldn't sell, or I... Well, there's a couple down here that maybe <laughs> meet that criteria, too. Yeah. What do you think? 
Ah, I'm waiting. Uh, Ashley's back on the camera. I like them all. I. Uh, we didn't show the uh, autumn scene. Show, show, pull it up. Which one is it? Okay, I'll, I'll bring it out. Okay. Yeah, give us a call. You're getting an original David Lloyd Glover. He has painted. Yeah, here, let me put this book down. Oh, yeah, put your book. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm in the way of your scene here. Look at this. Where is that? Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right? not the first time I've done that. No, it's, not. <laughs> it's the first step that'll kill you. Yeah. Okay. Where, where, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where is that? That is in, I'm trying to think what county it was. It's uh, Suffolk County, New York. Yes. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, here's what I want to do. This is not that long, nine, ten minutes. It gives you a great history. Uh, Visions of Light by David Lloyd Glover. I made this about 10, 12 years ago. I believe it shows you exactly who <laughs> David is, how he works, and why his work is so valuable. Take a look at this. And how he falls through the... I'm David Lloyd Glover, and art is my life. I've been an artist for the last 40 years. I've made my entire living working in the art field. When people ask me what my style is, I usually describe it as vivid impressionism, and that's because of the color palette that I use. And it's not so much about am I a landscape painter, a seascape painter, or am I still life painter, representational painter. I paint all things. There is a Glover signature. Collectors tell me there's something they see in my work, regardless of subject matter. They recognize my use of vivid colors, and there's a real resonance that they feel when they view one of my paintings, and particularly when they own one of the paintings. It has real emotional impact to them. When I was about four years old, my father took me to his favorite movie, and he took me to see Disney's Fantasia, and that was a whole wide world emotional thing that happened to me. You know, being in a big movie theater, the big screen, and seeing this artwork come to life, I was completely knocked off kilter, and my father explained to me that those aren't real things. I thought that was a real world. He said, no, those are all drawings. It was that mind-blowing experience that my father took me to that started me on this track of having to create. And I was voracious. I was drawing on everything. So they were getting me big stacks of paper, and I was filling them up as fast as I could, drawing everything that I saw on television, like Buck Rogers, Gene Autry, and Roy Rogers. I mean, I was just out of my mind. It started there, and it never stopped. I'm always thinking of the person who is going to view the painting and what perspective they're going to have on it, particularly if they're going to be the owner of that painting. It becomes their personal possession and therefore their personal vision. The passion isn't to entertain me. It's not about what I think or what I feel so much. I think about what it would affect somebody else and how I could deeply impact their psyche. I want to bring out human emotions in a way that is calming, serene, exciting, if it's a brilliant sunset or something. It's all about emotion, so that's what paint is. My paintings are really expressions of emotion.
The moment that I realized that I was gaining a reputation in art was when my Brentwood Gallery was having an exhibition for me, and I walked into a very busy gallery full of people waiting to see me. I noticed that Olivia Newton-John was standing right in front of one of my paintings. I'm new to Los Angeles, and I'm going, wow, that's Olivia Newton-John. And we're just having a one-on-one -on -one conversation like I'm an equal to her. We live here in Los Angeles, and it's the entertainment capital of the world and certainly the creative center of the world. As a result of that, I've created a lot of paintings which celebrate the cultural history of Hollywood with famous icons of American pop culture. did a painting of Django Reinhardt. He was the famous gypsy European jazz guitarist from the 1930s and 1940s. Anybody who plays guitar, that is his hero because there's just nobody else like Django Reinhardt. I finished the painting, I took it in, and the gallery director said to me, dude, that's a great painting, but I don't know who the heck that is. Along comes Kim Campbell, Glenn Campbell's wife. She took one look at this painting and went, oh my God. She ran back down the street, grabbed Glenn Campbell out of another store, took him up to the gallery and said, Glenn, look at that. And of course, that was it. He fell in love. That is his hero. Glenn Campbell is one of the greatest guitarists in the world ever. His hero is Django Reinhardt. So Glenn Campbell bought the painting. I've had a lot of artists that inspire me. I was at a show of Andrew Wyeth. When you see an Andrew Wyeth original painting, you realize he's really an artist's artist. They're wonderful compositions. His sense of light, of time and place are just outstanding, and it's very inspiring. Another artist is John Sargent. Although he was a portrait painter of great renown, he was also a wonderful impressionist painter who had great facilities to paint just about anything. His ability to capture a place and time was just outstanding. He would pride himself in painting a whole string of pearls with essentially a single brush stroke. I grew up in a city called Victoria in British Columbia. I lived six doors down from Emily Carr, and she is probably one of the greatest Impressionist painters that ever lived. And certainly in the realm of women painters, Emily Carr inspired George O'Keefe. And here I'm literally six doors down from her studio. The impact of seeing her work completely floored me. Her paintings were just unbelievable for the way an artist thinks and how an artist approaches his life, I turned to my mentor, Sid Barron, who became, over the years, what's considered a Canadian national treasure in the world of art and published art. He and I became friends when I was about 18, I think, at the time when I first met Sid. And I went to meet him at a studio, and I went down the hallway to that studio door, and it's blank, glass window, wrapped on the window, door opens, and this guy who looked like Art Carney from The Honeymooners looked at me and he said, huh, what do you want? And I said, well, I, I, my name is David Glover and I'm an artist and I, I really wanted to meet you and whatever. And he reached out and he grabbed me by the shirt and pulled me inside and said, get in here, close the door. And he said, now what was that again? At first he was a little shocked because nobody would ever come to his door. He was a recluse. But shortly thereafter we became fast friends and we became friends for years. And he really was my artistic mentor. He was not an artist who was telling me how to do things technically. It was really about philosophy, and it was about life experience. Sid prepared me for the rejection and sharing his life experience on what it's like as an artist to present your portfolio and constantly being rejected. And for me not to lose heart, expect to be rejected was what he would tell me. You make 10 presentations, you make 20 presentations, but eventually somebody will say yes and you'll be accepted. His guidance is what propelled me to pursue my career professionally. One of the most poignant moments early in my career was I was invited to Tokyo to have a one-man show with an art dealer there known as Art Brilliant. And Art Brilliant was, certainly at the time, the largest art dealer in the world. I went to an exhibition where it was kind of beyond description. There was over 850 people. The pomp and circumstance they put on, the ceremony of having an artist there live and in person, to them was really something big. 
At that show, I was sold out that evening. And it was just over 100 original paintings. I realized I had an awful lot of work to do because I signed an exclusive contract for Asia that went on for the next 17 years. Although it was very difficult to perform at such a high level for so many years, the result to me was that there really isn't anything that I can't do. Living in Southern California gives me the inspiration of light and atmosphere, but my broad, vivid landscapes that I create are from my memories of where I grew up in British Columbia. Those images live with you forever. When I want to create a stunning wilderness landscape or a mountainous lake, I go right back to when I was young. My studio is unique in that I have an eastern exposure. So in the morning, I control my lighting through the shutters, and I'm able to direct the light onto the canvas area to essentially color correct, because I can get a very clean color. As the day progresses, I move the shutters because the sun is rising above and then sets into the west. Even when the sun is setting, I get a specific style or type of light that comes in through the windows. When I have one of my paintings sold, I, I never really know whether the same emotions and message that I'm trying to impart in this painting actually transcends to the collector. It's the human part of us that perceives what we see and what we feel as art because we can go to that extra level and there it becomes art. My inspiration will come from some emotional and visual impact, and then I will express it in my paints, in my mediums. I want people to see the remnants of the artist. I want them to see a piece of art. I'm telling a story, either it's a narrative story by what you see going on in the scene, or it's strictly an emotional story. It's a response that you have to a particular light effect, a view down a country road, you imagine what's at the end of that road or where it's leading you to, or it's nostalgia. It reminds you of when you were growing up, or it reminds you of an important time in your life. Maybe it was your first romance. You were in a setting just like you see in this painting. So it touches this on a very base level. Art is something that chooses you, your ability to create in any kind of medium just comes innately and it starts when you're very young, certainly in my case it did. You feel this need to create all the time no matter what you're doing. But it's not something that I think that you decide one day you wake up and say, okay, let's go to school and be an artist. It has to come from within. Art is something that's always in your left ear telling you, yeah, it's time to paint. It's time to paint, David. You kind of follow the direction that all forces are leading you in. I have done other things in my life, but art is always the mainstay. It has been a constant in my life since I was four years old, and it's a constant today. Everything I do in my life revolves around creativity. that now. Uh, David, mic back up. Here we are. We're back to you live and I want to thank you for watching that presentation. I made that a long time ago. Now, here's what I want you to do, folks. We were talking to David. He, he there's oh. some, oh, the some gallery yeah, owners called in and they were talking about a painting this way. that they bought for 15000 20000 we're offering tonight for 1500 1200 So when you see something you like, this is an amazing artist. This is the David Lloyd Glover. And this one right here, we will pull up the graphics on again, BC2851. Uh, I mean, in a gallery, this is 25, 27,000 here tonight. What did we price this for, Ashley? Two, two, 
eight five one. What does that say? Autumn. Autumn Lane. Yeah. Yeah. What what was the price? Do we throw out a price? The here? Autumn Country Lane. Retail twenty five, twenty six thousand. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what. Say what? Yeah. I'll tell you what. I'll make this so affordable. And this is, was this painted with a palette knife? No, th this one's a brush painting. All right. It, it was the other one that we showed that has 1400 to open. And you can't go wrong. Well, you see, you don't have to pay for the gallery overhead. Yeah. And boy, no. that's a big bite. These are absolutely stunning. And I'll tell you, I have many favorites, but I, I think that cottage, we've had a couple calls on that, but I am going to move this one back over here. There's a couple that we haven't shown. Oh, we'll grab them. Let's show them. Because this is from one of my books. Oh. You know, I've done six how to paint books for the Walter Foster Publishing Company. Oh, you, you, yes. And that's how I learned how to paint in 1956. <laughs> I had my first Walter Foster how to paint book. And these are water and, lilies. Water lilies. and You, you know, and Monet. This was for color, like how to mix colors and use colors to create dimensions. And this dimensions. painting actually appeared in a Walter Foster book. Yes. I, I used it as a demonstration painting oh, on wow. color, color mixing with acrylic paints. BC 2850. And acrylic on canvas painted in 2018. That book has been sold all over the world in different languages. And you're going to own the original. You own the original. You, you can still buy the book. And uh, this was to show how colors create are you know, complementary. So the, the colors of the water, which is the, the blues and the purples, and, and, and then juxtaposed with the, the red, and then red and green are, are opposites of the spectrum. So the red flowers just pop out. And you can see all the, it, it just rains, so you see the water on the, on the lily pads. Well, this is in the Walter Foster book? Yes. It's 1100 to open. I just want to keep showing you some. Give me a call. This is in the Walter Foster book. Um, I know you don't have favorites, but we haven't shown that one. No, we haven't. Now, now, this was also in a Walter Foster book. All right. Uh, the title was uh, Painting Pastoral Paintings. And this is a study from Giverny, France. And, Giverny. And this is, uh, that's the house right up here that uh, Claude Monet built for himself in France. So that's France. Monet's house. And his garden. Monet's garden. Yeah, you can see the, uh, th these are the metal uh, arbors fill up with uh, all kinds of flowers during the uh, summer months. Wow. Just, just hanging off the arbors. And there's the pathway that leads you around. And this is 2855. Giverny Garden de Monet. Wow. Yeah, so that really is Claude Monet's garden. So if you go, thousands of people go to Giverny. Yeah. It's like a pilgrimage. So you could actually go find this spot and stand there and say, there's my painting. Now, have you ever been in any New York galleries or? Yes. And yeah. like, what would they have something like this in a New York gallery? Well, they have to pop it up pretty high. So uh, you're looking at 20, 25,000. 20, 25,000. Because not only are you paying the overhead of the gallery, the gallery takes such a big chunk, but the yeah. customer's paying for that. Yes. So you're actually, tonight, you're able to buy this oh. kind of at cost. Ashley, what would you price this at? 16 Two, inches by 20 inches. 2855. What? No, she's killing me. Surrounded by assassins. Uh oh. 1,200 to open. Wow. Yeah, that's... That's a gift. Yeah, oh, it is, and I think the canvas was twelve hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, well, this one, just because I made you say the name three times, rhododendrons. This, folks, I just want to show you something. When you buy this, and you walk around it in your house, you're going to see something different every time. 
That's what really good art will do. Yes, it does. You find little nuances in yes, it this every time is you look at it. BC 2852. That's What's the that? title. A flower path for your love. A flower path There's the for path. Your love. There's the flowers. It's for your love. You, and you know when when does you does that make me happy? It, it should. Yes, of course it does. <laughs> you don't have to do a mind melt for this one. No. Yeah. This no. this will sell itself. You know, um, if you put the right light on this, uh huh, uh, and during the evening and the daytime light, you'll see different colors will start to appear that you didn't see Look at, that. at another time of the day. Yeah. Yeah. What 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 color is that blue? Is that thalo mixed with what? What is that blue? That's a Prussian blue. Prussian. Prussian blue. But I, I make my blues. You make them? Yeah, rather than, t you know, I, I take them you out of the tube. You make your own blues. I, I use primary. You go punch your wife. How do you make yeah. your own blues? Do you get her yelling at you? No. Nope. How do you make your own blues? I, I use a primary. I get sad all the time, but I don't know. <laughs> how do you get sad? Um, I don't. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. But my, my blue is, or, or any of these colors, actually, I use just primaries. I, I use yellow and primary red yeah. and primary blue, and I use yeah. Yeah. black. I don't use black. I use white, and that's it. So out of those, I create all the colors. So if you see something that looks like a cobalt blue, I've made that. Oh, okay. I've mixed it. Uh, a customer wants to know, uh, they're from... Victoria, so did you ever paint any floral scenes from Bush Gardens in Victoria? Butchart. It's called Butchart Gardens, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a beautiful place. Yeah. Do we have any here like that? No, no. Uh, oh, I sold those years ago. Butchart Gardens is in a, an old rock quarry. It yeah. was owned by the Ross family, and they, when they weren't quarrying any more rock, they took it all out. They turned the big pit into this fantastic garden. And now oh. it's a big tourist attraction in Vancouver Island. Well, right here, this is BC 2847. This is haunting. It really uh, is. Yes. Now, you look right into this statue. Look at her. And uh, the, the, the blues he put under the eyes, right over the lip, yeah. on the top of the nose. It, it's like haunting. Look at that. It's like she's there. And as the light changes, it really comes to life. Yes. Egyptian garden uh, painted in 1998. This is an amazing painting. Uh, yes. Where were you in 1998? Uh, 1998. Yeah. I lived in Belmarin Keys. 1998. 2000, I was selling for Panda America. Wow, see? Yeah, no, Time I, lived, gone I by. lived in Vashon Island. Oh, up in uh, see, Washington no, State. Yeah, my son was born in 1996 Vashon in Seattle. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, I lived in Bel Air at the time. Oh. I, 1998. That's fancy stuff, David. <laughs> well. <laughs> Bel Air. Well, I, I had to go dumpster diving after Thanksgiving. I uh, sold a lot of paintings. Sort. A Did lot of paintings got uh, me there. Well, folks, here's what I want to do. Ashley, I'm going to let you talk to David for a second here. Call. I'm going to be in the phone bank. I want to sell. Just pick out some paintings. Let me get this Schofield out of here. And then we pretty much That's a pretty painting. have all of David's art, let me just uh, take away, well, the Vasari can stay there. Yeah. Here you go, Ashley. Another customer is asking, David, have you ever used artist by the name Annie Poor? Annie Poor. Uh, wow, that sounds familiar. I, I don't know her. Was she like me? Did, did, did she paint like me? Oh, well, that looks like Andrew Wyeth. Yeah, yeah Andrew Wyeth. 
Here's what I'm going to do. Ashley's now mic'd up. Here's what I'm going to do. Ashley, yes, the first few people that buy paintings, I'm going to keep lowering the price. I work on the tightest of margins, and I'm going to even uh, the first two I'm going to frame and ship them for free. First two? Yeah, first, first three. First two. First I'd be three. all over that one on the bottom or this At one. At the winery, yeah. Yeah, just give us a call, and I'm going to be standing over here. All right. Oh, Good evening, also. everyone. <laughs> yeah, it's Ashley. It's Ashley and David time. Yes, we are. Oh, oh yeah. We also Let, let's not forget the panda. Sale. Thank you, Barry. My pleasure. There's a little certificate in here. Is it still there? Yeah. That's still. good. All right. 2847. Still up on the easel. 2847. And that's, yeah, that's the Egyptian garden. Yes, it is. There's a lot going on in that painting. Yeah, it's stunning, though. The shadows are just incredible how you did them. No, I, I use like a foreshortening technique. Okay. Yeah, so you, you've got your foreground here, and then over here you brought this element in, but you can tell that it's a little further back. You see I the sunlight, hear. there's a little pool of sunlight there, a little pool of sunlight there. And you see a little bit of pool of sunlight, and it keeps going back into the yep. into the trees, and you I see, see the, the flowers. Depths. I could just walk right around that corner right there. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> around that wall. <laughs> yeah. But that's uh, how you juxtapose warm colors to cool colors, and that creates your depth. Absolutely incredible. Like I was telling you earlier today, I just mm -hmm. find you so incredible. And oh, thank you. Well, if we were, if you were going to choose the next one, would you choose that one? The the cottage yeah. or the um, the arbor. I love when you do arbors, but I also. This cottage is just speaking to me. Good. Well, let's uh, discuss the cottage. 2848. Garden at East Oak. They, in England, and when you go what they call a garden district, which could be, um, a, a Kent is a, a good source of gardens. Stowe is a good source of gardens. Um, they take this very seriously. And a lot of these gardens are as old as the houses. I mean, some of the original plantings. Oh, really? Yeah, it's a serious business for them. Yeah, I mean, they oh, live for it. Yeah. yeah. Well. And they have this soil there that really does uh, generate blossoms like you wouldn't believe. I right. Mean, I have huge. this one bamboo plant uh -huh. that um, I've kept alive for a while mm -hmm. now. I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> that's are, good. Do you have a garden? I do. Oh, you do? Oh, that's uh, incredible. On, on the roof, you know, I'm in the, in the penthouse, uh -huh. and I've got a huge roof, and it's oh. the whole, th it looks like a jungle. There, there's, the garden is just so <laughs> abundant. That's amazing. I totally would have guessed you as a gardener. Yeah, and, and it's full of <laughs> uh, hummingbirds and, and uh, little yellow-breasted sparrows oh. all live in there, and I've oh, got squirrels running around, and <laughs> I'm on the top of a building. Yeah, it's quite something. But lots of stories here. Yes. There's their stories. little covered uh, front door. You see the windows are open upstairs. You see the, over here was the... Uh, Do we got somebody on the phone, Patty? Yeah. Are they interested in one of the Glovers? Yes. Okay, which one? Egyptian Garden. Okay, let's go back to that one. Egyptian Garden. All right. There's a sense of... Are they wanting best price? Yeah, Barry's getting this right now. There's a sense of... Um, you know, the, the green in here, the, the types of green, yes. gives you like a zen right. kind of a feel to it. All right, this one is being, if you guys are interested in this one, this one's being worked on right now. How would you frame this? How would I frame it? Yeah. I think I would go either black yeah, or... Yeah, that would be interesting. Black or maybe a touch of the color, the color of the purple. Yeah. You know. And you. White would look amazing too. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I love for framing your artwork in black white. or white. Black or white. But simple, sometimes yeah. a touch of color, like the orange flowers. Let's oh, go yeah. on to the orange flowers. This may be spoken for. The, this is uh, oil on canvas. It's, yes. It's not acrylic. 
oil on canvas, but these orange flowers, yeah. could you imagine if there was an orange frame? Yes. That would just be stunning on a wall. Walking the, the, into your, your foyer. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the foyer, yeah. into my foyer. Yeah. <laughs> I have all kinds of art in my foyer. Oh, I bet. Yeah. There, there are some paintings I can't sell. My wife wouldn't let me. She, 2849, yeah, she sounds like a, a like me. Yeah, she I get falls very in love attached. With, yeah, I'm a, very I said, well, let, let's take this. Uh, no, 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 I, I, I love that one. You'll have to paint another one, I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah. And, and I, I did that by mistake once. I, I took a, I did a kind of a Mo, Monet-like uh, water lilies garden, uh, you know, water garden. Right, yes. And I took it off the living room wall, and I took it to an art show, and I didn't come home with it. Because oh. it's sold. I feel for her. Yeah, and I said, "Well, I was, you know, kind of demonstrating it," and she goes, "Yeah, well, you sold it." So. And this is what we want you all at home to do: yeah. is fall in love yeah. with paintings, and that's why David's telling you about his wife, and her, and. Uh, yeah, it her. becomes part of her. Yeah, you know. <laughs> exactly. It really does. That's what we want you to feel through the camera. Uh, call in, ask any questions. We'll. Well, David's here to explain yeah, his Yeah, now paintings. I can answer it. Yes. I can answer that he can answer mystic it. question. And he's, he's one of the artists that are good to get a hold of. And if you do have a question about a painting that was mm -hmm. at home or that you purchased and it's at home, he can answer those questions for you too. That's right. Like I Mr. Could. and Mr. M, they told you that they are just in love with the lighting of their painting, yeah. where they hung it. They're just in love with it. Yeah, they, they discover what light can do. Can yes. you show the panda? Oh, yeah, we can go. You got a we got somebody we, on we the have, panda? We, we have a special, very special painting. That's a panda. <laughs> I did a series of the endangered species in, in a semi-abstract uh, style. I don't see an item number, so we're going to have to find it. I think it was, wasn't it up there? Sticker fell off? Sticker did fall off. Oh, okay. So, you just keep talking about it. Yep, the, the love affair of pandas. And... If anybody is watching right now that uh, follows pandas, you'll know that the Chinese who had given us pandas years ago uh, wanted them back, and they were sent away, which is kind of sad in a way. You know, they've, they've lived their whole lives. They took their pandas back. They took their pandas back. Now, President Xi is talking about, well, oh, maybe he might give Item us some new pandas. Item number 2743. Oh, my goodness. But they're so rare. But people, in, they, I mean, people were really heartbroken because they fell in love with our pandas. Now, this panda is green. Yeah. It, yeah. And why did you do that? Yeah, because they require the green of the forest. Oh. You, you know, they eat bamboo. Yeah. Yeah. Are you telling me, David, that that panda got a piece of bad bamboo? No, Bad good bamboo. bamboo. Look, good how, bamboo. look how healthy he looks. He's, he's healthy. But he's green. But that's not always a bad thing. He's he's more than green. He's camouflaged in yeah. the trees. He's that, that's right. See, camouflaged <laughs> in the trees. <laughs> but this is a, acrylic on canvas. And, so an uh, escape panda. I you did. Stay uh, here until you get a home. I did polar bears. I did uh, penguins. I, you know, endangered species. Yes. And I yes. did uh, and the panda. So this is it. I have no more endangered species paintings. Left. Okay, this is it. This you is, heard it from his this mouth. This is the final. All right. So what did you want to do with this? I want to tell you what. Ashley, can I have my mic back? Yes, of course. Second? Here's what I'm going to do. We need more mics. <laughs> no. Oh, David, I'm going to yell when I need you. Keep <laughs> okay. that right there. I'm going to get busy here. All right. Now, folks. I won't be going too far. All right. Folks, David, Love, David Lloyd Glover is one of the most important artists. I've been doing shows. He's been on my show for a decade and a half. I made that docudrama about him 15, 20 years ago. I just want you to know this is my 33rd year on TV. He is one of the best, and I can beat anybody's prices on David Lloyd Glover's. What I want to do is I want to make a package. If somebody likes three of them, they like two of them, we like one and you want me to frame it and ship it, I'll cut prices. I'll turn on my calculator, I'll sharpen my pencil, I'll make some deals. Call me. I, I need to move a few of these from where I am 
sitting. I think this is one of the stars of the night, the Egyptian garden. Uh, he did this so long ago, 98, 08, 18, 28 would be 30, 26 years ago. Look at that. It's one of the one of the showstoppers, and it comes with certs everywhere. These are original David Lloyd Glovers. If you if you went to an auction somewhere, they're going to charge you twenty grand. That's one of the advantages that Barry Chapel's Fine Art Showcase can give you. This Julius Caesar right here, I think, is one of the coolest paintings. It has all the certificate. This is acrylic on canvas done in 1998, uh, 25 years ago, BC 2845. You're talking a $30,000 painting, but not here. I can get this to you so cheap. For a few hundred more, I can even frame it. I mean, I'll work deals. I need to find somebody who just wants one, maybe two. Call me. Let me know what you're thinking. This garden scene here. Stop the presses. Look at this. This right here. Garden East Grove Cottage. That is unbelievable. Just tell me which ones. I'm going to make you happy. I've been doing this for 33 years. Coins and art. I can feel that someone's going to call up. So, tell me which ones. I think they are all stunning. But something like this right here, the day's end, unbelievable. <coughs> all right. Take a look at that. I'm going to make someone a great day, great deal on this right now. The day's end. That is acrylic on canvas. This is not a poster. This is not an overpaint. This is not some paint by numbers. This is the David Lloyd Glover. A man that gets paid fifty, a hundred, two hundred thousand a painting, painted some paintings to show on this show. This came from his private collection right here. He painted this so long ago, 2013. Painted this ten years ago. Call me. Let's work some deals. Get me close. Someone call Ashley that wants two paintings or one. Which one do they want? Yeah, let's make some deals right now. I thank you for watching me on Primetime Shopping Network. And it's, it's, we got some great stuff here. These are all painted by the David Lloyd Glover. One of the star artists for Art Brilliance. He, he has sold in Japan. He has sold in England. Sold in the United States. He's been one-man gallery shows. He has a small book about his art, and he's autographing it to people who buy. Which ones are you interested in? Call me up. I can work you deals that nobody on or off TV could ever dream of. So please give me a call.
Folks, a painting like this next one, BC 2852, that is so special. These are paintings that I hope someday your granddaughter, your grandson, your son, your daughter go, I'm so glad you bought that. This is an artist that has 40 years of sales behind him in retail galleries in Tokyo, art brilliance everywhere. I mean, this is... I mean, Park West is a great company, but Art Brilliance and David Lloyd Glover, he painted this 18 years ago in 2005. A flower path for your love. I'm going to sell this right now. What do we have this up for? Tell you what, I'm going I'm to make somebody one heck of an offer. Dude, this is one of the most expensive paintings, and nothing's expensive because I know David and I've worked with him so long, and he cuts his prices so much cheaper than any other gallery could ever think about acquiring it. But in my show tonight, this is probably the most expensive painting, and the amount of work that he put into this is mind-boggling. And I'll tell you what, where most galleries, they would not consider a penny less than $25,000. i have been to those galleries. My mom owned an art gallery when I was growing up, Editions Limited. She was also a publisher. But something like this in a, in a gallery in New York City or prime real estate is going to be $35,000. I got a special price for you right now. This is probably the most expensive painting in the, in the show. Uh, I, I tell you what, I'm going to discount this and discount. We might have had it up for 3200 Watch this. Come to camera two. Here's what I'm going to do right now, and this is the cheapest, and I hope you take me up on it. And Ashley, whoever buys this, I'm even going to throw in a free frame and shipping. Here's what I'm going to do. Th this is one of the greatest paintings David has ever painted. $1,500 to open, $100 increments once we get the open. That is a painting of paintings. Do you have somebody there? Wayside House. Got a couple people interested. Call me on this. This is off the charts. All right, Wayside House. I am going to put this on this corner right here. I know Wayside House. Here it is. This is a larger painting. And this was painted in 1998. 25 years ago by David Lloyd Glover. I'll tell you what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make some stuff happen. Here's what I'm going to do. I know we probably have for 2,500. Watch this. I'm going to start with the unlucky number, Ashley. The hard luck number. Thir 1300 to open. That's cheap. 1300 to open, $100 increments. I got two people. This is a large painting. It was painted 25 years ago. What do they say, Ashley? I mean, this is an original David Lloyd Glover. I 
Uh, I, 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 I lowered that from like three to 15 under. I'll tell you what, 1,300. Yes. And on this, Ashley, what are your customers? What? Oh, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I want to make something happen. But this is a very expensive painting. Can they come up $200? Let's make something happen. This is an amazing painting. You're getting an original David Lloyd Glover. <coughs> and what do they say, Patty? Okay. We might be selling one. And I'm waiting on your guy, your people there, Ashley. What do they say? Sold. This is gone. Thank you. Now somebody, Patty, is working on this one right here. We're getting real close to this. All right. What do they say? Patty, that is an... This is one of the most expensive paintings in the show. What's that? All right, this is sold. And he gets a book about David Lloyd Glover with the painting. This is sold too, Ashley. This is gone. Yeah, well, your favorite's gone. Now, what I want to show you folks is a painting of paintings here. They all are... This painting right here, there's something about this painting. Now, uh, this is BC 2847. There's something magical about this painting. There's something very magical about this painting. I saw this when David was showing me some of the paintings via email or talking on the phone. I go, my gosh, David, Egyptian garden. On this one, hey, give me 10 seconds and I'll tell you. Who is that? Same customer. I'm going to give him a better, better deal. All right, watch this. Watch this. I, I, this is so cheap, I can't say it on the air. I got to tell Patty. A stunning painting. When he gets this, he hangs this up. He's going to see there's magic in this painting. It is absolutely, there's something when you look straight into the statue, stuff happens. Okay, take your time. Goodness. And I want to thank everyone. My dog's doing better. Uh, mean dog bit my dog in the neck, David, at the dog park. And I have a very scared coon hound dog named Ginger that I rescued. And I told this guy, he kept telling me I'm a disabled vet, but he had all of his fingers, toes, hands, and everything, so he could talk very fast. But his dog just ran up and bit Ginger. She had, she had an operation. No. Yeah, no, well, uh, yeah, look at this face right here. The, dog, the guy said now somebody's making him take it to obedience school, but I called it reform school. I said, take your dog to reform school. Forget about obedience. There's something magical. It changes before your eyes. Yeah, I saw this when David sent me a JPEG, and I'm going, what's going on? Is it? That's the Sphinx? Yeah. That's why I call it the Egyptian garden. 
Yeah, the oh, I got gotcha. you. The Egyptian garden. And I just, I thank all of you. Julius Caesar. This is Julius. What's my cost? I want to make a customer. I'm doing. And what's your customer's name? Uh, Brian. Brian. I want to make every. Tell you what. I'll come down. I'll come down on this. I, I know he wants to pay that. Can he come up 200 from what he wants to pay? And it's his. And I'll ship it for free. Yes. What's that? How much did he say? 1,200. I've cut, cut, cut. And that is Julius Caesar. Okay, uh, when you take a picture, can you? Thank you. This is gone, Ashley. And what about this one? Patty, was he interested in this one? Yeah, that's actually Chopper I'm working on. Chopper, how's he doing? That's gone, yes. That's gone. Oh, okay. Camera two, Chopper. Chopper, you know anybody who can take care of this guy? whose dog bit my dog, had to go under an operation. And like your little dog, what's your dog's name, Juliet? Juanita. Yeah, what would you do if a little dog, dog, big mean dog, came up and bit him? No, I'm not going to kill some dog. I'd kill the owner, but that... The dog or the owner? No, I would bite the owner, but not the dog. No, I'm not going to bite a dog. You're mean, Juliet. That's what happened to Romeo. All right. <clears throat> Romeo learned that real fast. So I have this. And this. All right. I was, which one? For this one? Done. That's sold. And maybe we'll, we'll take David in the parking lot and get him to give us a couple hundred back on this one, Ashley. <laughs> Work David over on this one. <laughs> Say what? That autumn one with the autumn leaves. Let me show that one. Oh, okay. And and I'm going to show the autumn leaves. But this big sky right here, this is uh, this is Savannah, Georgia, if I'm not mistaken. The day's end, or no, this is a winery. This is a winery. It was painted ten years ago. It is entitled The Day's End. It's acrylic on canvas. Call me. I'll make you a deal. Now, Matt Jackals has requested this next painting. Now, watch this because the hand's quicker than the eye, Matt. Did you see that? I showed it, turned it around, showed it, turned this around, and put this one back. All right, I'm not that fast. Here is the Givery Garden de Monet. That's at Monet's house. That house in the background is the house that Monet bought, built, built right there. And this is absolutely stunning. This is B.C. 
2851. And look at this. Painted in 2019, David Lloyd Glover. Hey, Ashley, what's my price on the autumn? The Autumn Country Lane. I like the Incredible Autumn. Okay. Oh, call me on this. I'm going to give you a deal. You're going to go, what? He can't do that. I can't. But, Matt, here's the way I figure. I'm going to give a very special price on this, right? But we have a gated parking lot. And we can keep it so David doesn't get out of the parking lot. So, uh, Patty, I'm going to sell this cheaper than I should if someone calls up because we're going to hold David Lloyd Glover as hostage. Anybody that's got two L's in their name, we can jam them a little bit more in the price. Did you ever learn that in business school, Ashley? Have you ever met anybody with two L's? In the, well, my last name has two L's. Chapel. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> I'm going to get myself in trouble. I'm a little upset with you, Juliet. You never went dumpster diving. You've never gone through a garbage can to find good stuff. I'm going to tell you a true story, Juliet, while someone thinks about the autumn country lane that actually has Claude Monet's house in the picture. And David Lloyd Glover went plain air painted this in front of his house. Now, Juliet, at Editions Limited, my mom's gallery, they had sold the building and they're moving to another building. And people had thrown artwork into the trash can. And it was really nice stuff. It was their sample posters that the artist had signed. The posters were fine. The plexi was fine. And it was a big dumpster. I jumped in there and I saved 12 or 14 paintings. They were fine. And they were on my first art show uh, at Keystone Communications. And my cost was very low because I d dug them out of my mom. I said, Mom, why would you throw that away? What the heck is wrong with you? What's it? Long time ago. Um, Ashley, what I pay on the autumn country, as you call it, the amazing. Call me. I got a great price. This is Monet's house. Nobody wants a green panda. Do we have any vets that watch us? What would turn a white panda green? Lots of yeah, you're saying that he has an eating disorder? Yeah. This panda has an eating disorder? Or maybe the, uh, the visitors to the park are throwing pizza. Hey, nothing wrong with pizza. Yes, yeah, if a panda eats pizza, you might have a problem. Oh. Oh, where's, oh, yeah, the blue bonnets right here. True story. David, when do you think, when do you think pizza in America became as, I'm not talking about the 80s or the 70s, but when do you think it really got its start? This is BC 2853 in the United States. Well, uh, Sicilians in New York. Yeah, but you're talking what year? Probably, I would say 1910. Most of the pizza got going in the Great Depression where people and neighbors, someone had tomatoes, somebody had wheat, and they get together. And they'd say, let's make some pizza because they have bread, tomato sauce. Yeah, there you go. Eh. Major 
All right. Folks, I want to thank you. I got this incredible castle here that I'm gonna, I haven't shown enough. And then I got, uh, I got 29 minutes left. All right, and I'm going to show you. Excuse me, I shouldn't be drinking while I'm on TV. I'm joking. But you keep talking about Foster. I was trying to think of Foster Brooks, the guy that played the Foster drunk. Brooks? Yeah. Uh, he could play the best drunk when he wasn't drunk, yeah. and he'd go on an airplane, and stewardesses would hand him the mic as a joke, and he'd go, this is your captain speaking. <laughs> We might have some weather. <laughs> this is BC 2848. This is another very expensive painting. I am going to I'm going to do everything I can. David has given me prices nobody else on the planet could get. This is um garden at East Grove Cottage. Ashley, what's my uh, cost on this? Because I'm going to make someone so happy. Rose oh, look at that. Is that a rose garden? That's a rose garden. That's right. Goes by the picket fence. Okay. Roses by the ro the picket fence. All right. I see the picket fence. Yeah, and then there's the roses by the gate. I see the roses. I see the gate. It is. Tell you what I'm going to do on this. I got a very, very special price. And David just lowered this price, which he shouldn't have done. And I'm going to give you guys a deal you will not believe. This was painted in 2006. Acrylic on canvas. Call for this. This is an amazing painting. It will change before your eyes. Uh, I do I have one back there. I think I might have one back here, but yeah, it would be behind. No, uh, yeah, right behind that big painting right there. No. Yeah. Uh. Maybe no cartoon characters. They they it might even be up right there. No, no, uh in this yeah. Oh look at that, yes. No cartoon characters tonight. Hmm. Tell you what I'm going to do. Keep calling on David Lloyd Glover's work. Um, he hasn't sold the winery. Say what? He hasn't sold the winery at sunset. All right, here is Napa Valley Winery. It's called The Day's End. It was painted in 2013. It is acrylic on canvas. And it is BC 2854. And then I got something I want to show you because I think it's absolutely stunning. Oh, look at that sky. That is a magical sky. And as David said, he painted this plain air. What plain air is a fancy word that you see in textbooks, and people go, what do you mean plain air? Is there unplain air? 
Is there unregular air? No, it means he set up his easel out front of this winery, and that sunset is going to change within 30, 40, 50 minutes. It's going to be mostly different. So he's got to remember it, sketch it, doodle it, and then paint and make it happen. And that's what that is. Call me. I will make you a great deal on the plain air winery. Napa Valley. Napa Valley. Painted 10 years ago. This one? Hey, Ashley, what's my price on the winery? Who's your customer? Who? DW. All right, I'll tell you, DW? Here's what I'm going to. What am I saying wrong? Oh, D. Okay, D as her first name is D. Gotcha now. I'll tell you what, for her, this is a special. It's a him, my. Oh, you guys are trying to get me in real trouble. Surrounded by assassins tonight. Here's what I'm going to do for her, for him, for him. Special, special price. DW, because they're trying to kill me. I'm surrounded by assassins. That's a, they, it's supposed to be 500 more than that. I just made him a heck of a deal. And we have a return policy. If you don't love it, send it back. You won't because you'll get it. You go, I got to have that. And what state is DW in? I love Texas. What part of Texas? Where? I lived in Denton. Corn City. I lived in Denton, Texas for five years. And I uh, actually went to North Texas State University for three and a half of those five. Um, this is a must buy. I've lowered it, lowered it, lowered it. I hope this finds its way to Texas. Yeah, no auction. It's straight out. If you don't love it, send it back. You won't because you'll research it? Okay. Well, thank you. I'll give him a deal. I'll tell you what. For both framing and shipping, tell him that. And, and I'm going to frame it up real nice. You'll love it. While you're thinking about this, this is a Michael Schofield. David Lloyd Glover is friends with Michael. Michael has closed his studio down. He is completely retired. He is not painting anymore, and he painted this in 2022. It's a very unique Schofield right here, BC 2786. And this is, look at all those shades of green. He's going to love it. If he doesn't love it, call me. I'll make sure he loves it. I've been doing this for 33 years. I don't cut any corners. I get, I earn our money by beating down artists. I shouldn't say that with David here, but. All right, uh, Ashley, uh, what's my cost on BC 2786? This is a very unique Michael Schofield. It departs. Uh, he does. He does a lot of autumn scenes. 
This is a beautiful spring scene. And uh, David, if you looked at that painting, I'm going to guess there's got to be 18 to 20 different shades of green here. Oh, yeah. Or more. Yeah, it, it's, it's an amazing painting. Um, he is in the Billion Dollar Arm and Hammer collection. He's in the Smithsonian collection. He's in the Library of Congress collection. And I'll tell you what, oh, you're going to love this. $1,100 to open, $200 increments. On done. Tell them and tell them I'm doing that because I want them to watch more shows. Some nights I have coins, but not lately. I only buy when it's time to really move in. And like gold went up forty-five dollars today, Matt, an ounce. Yeah, you're going great. I I I needed to buy some. All right, so that's sold. Not that one, but the Schofield is here. And we believe, Ashley, this is being sold right now. There we go. And did anybody buy? Garden at East Grove. I have Garden at East Grove. Call me. I'm down to 17 minutes, 19 minutes. I am wheeling and dealing. You want to talk about a Michael John Schofield in the billion, with a B, the billion dollar Arm & Hammer collection. Th this is a seascape right here. This is BC 2788 right here. Yeah, Matt. Look at that. That is a perfect seascape. These are going for 32000 And Michael is totally retired. He locked up his studio. He does not paint. He's writing a book, but he does not paint anymore. And for somebody that's in the Smithsonian Collection, Library of Congress Collection, the Billion Dollar Arm and Hammer Collection, something like this is thirty-two to 35000 First collar, 1200 It's yours. And that is an amazing seascape. So those are my two Schofields I have left. And I want to thank you. Call me. I got about... Ten or twelve minutes left. I want to I make everybody a deal. You got Christmas coming up. I'm going to get these paintings to you as fast as we possibly can. I bought a painting myself today. And Matt joked around at me. He goes, do you have an account here? And I said, well, I'm not sure. And I bought it for my daughter, Katie, a painting that we had been joking about, and I said, this has got to go to Katie. One of my Russian artists, Sasha Basari, there was one that Pierre has to go to Katie. No calls on this.
Tell you what I'm going to do. I want to. Uh, this is a Matt. This is important. The fact that David Glover is a friend of Michael Schofield, and David was telling me that Michael locked his studio, moved out of it. He's done painting. I can't get any more. He's done. I only have two Schofields here. This one, the Seascape BC two seven eight six. If you ever wanted to get a Michael Schofield seascape, please call me now because this is, we're coming down to the end of the night. And below it, I have a Michael Schofield landscape. Michael Schofield is one of the most important artists. I've known him for well over 30 years. I also have a gentle surrealism painting right here, BC 2807, tricorn hat. That was painted by Sasha Basari. He lives in St. Petersburg, Russia. He is a graduate of the St. Petersburg Academy of Art. He got his first four-year degree from the Pushkin Academy. They got his master's from the uh, uh, St. Petersburg Academy of Art. This is called Tricorn Hat. Look at those eyes. Though Sasha Basari is an older, he's, he's now, he's getting old. He paints with the eyes of a little kid. And you know that dog? You know this kid in the Tricorn Hat? And he does that. It's the most magical gift. Matt's going to slowly pull the camera up to the kid's eyes and you go, that kid knows me. I know that kid. He's talking to me right now. That's the gift of Sasha Basari. Call me on this. I'll work you a great deal. So give me a call. I am down to my last 12 minutes. I have David Lloyd Glovers here. I have Michael Schofields. I got Sasha Basari. Tell me what I can help you with and we'll make it happen. Hey, Ashley, we sold the Royo, didn't we? Uh, and the Azule, didn't we? What? That sold? Thank you. And what was that other one? Um, Yeah, Days In is gone. Thank you. And the other, uh, no, the horse piece by Ashley. We sold that, right? Okay, let's see. Yeah, we sell it? Well, let's put that back up, too. This is a one of one, folks. This is Guillaume Ashley. Have you ever met Guillaume? He is the youngest living artist to ever be accepted into the Louvre. He was accepted into the Biblique Nationale. He, there we go, we're talking down there. That's a one of one. That is hand laid gold leaf. He started out with a silk screen. And then he hand watercolored all the horses. And he's been the cover, the front cover and the back cover of Selmer Smith's Print World Guide many times. She loved his work. And Ashley, what is the number on this horse? And I thank all of you. We're down to 11 minutes. 2843. That is a one of a kind, virtually an original, by Guillaume Agelet. It is Leva de Soul. What does that mean again? Leva de Soul. Good uh, morning, sun. Is it morning, sun? Sunrise. Well, that would be morning, sun. 
Sunrise. Guillaume was born in Casablanca, Morocco, immigrated to France, uh, self-taught. He's the king of the line. Oh, look at that. Talking, that painting's got gold in it. And watercolor, everything. Call me up. I'm going to give you a great deal. Uh, I'm going to give you a heck of a deal. $1,150. That's a large piece. I mean, there's seven, eight, ten thousand. Go on art bro. I mean, go on art brokerage. Go on eBay. When you see something that's been hand watercolored by the youngest living artist to ever be accepted into the Louvre in Paris, the permanent archival collection of the Louvre, the Bibliothèque Nationale, you're going to find it's Guillaume Agelet. I think he's in his late 60s, early 70s. Good guy. Call me. I got nine minutes left. We, we need a nine minute sprint. Okay. Paintings that should, should have sold, but didn't. All right. Look at these blue bonnets by David Lloyd Glover. Hey, that's easy title too. Look at this Schofield. I was ready to give this so cheap. Oh, I'll keep it because I can't get any more because he quit. Here is Blue Bonnet Field. Blue Bonnet Fields, acrylic uh, and palette knife painted Two years ago, look at that. BC 2853. Call me, I'll work you a deal. I'm down to eight minutes. Mac, can you, are you any good at sound effects like uh, Mission Impossible? Da 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 da. <laughs> Uh, call me if you don't own a David Lloyd Glover he's 74 years old I have a great one right here when he used to work for Art Brilliance his paintings would sell well over 100,000 some way way over 100,000 He's done gallery shows in many galleries. Here's a painting that galleries would try and get twenty-five to thirty thousand. I'm not going to be anywhere near that. I'm not even going to be a tenth of that. I'm going to sell this so cheap to have an original David Lloyd Glover. You got a cert from David Lloyd Glover on the back. He signs the front. Um, Ashley, what am I in Blue Bonnet Fields for? I'm gonna give you a deal you can't believe. Oh, this is too cheap. Oh, this is too cheap. Just to see if anybody's watching me with six minutes left. Nine hundred and ninety-five dollars. Look at those skies. Matt, look at the color of those skies. Got a little salmon color in there. 
What type of green is that in the top cloud, David? Army green. What color peach or purple is that? And the below the green, what color is that? Is that lavender? A little crimson red in there? And is that how you make the blue stand out? I just look, price this. I'm losing money if you call up and buy this. I just wanted to see if anybody is still watching me with five minutes to go. $995. That's a deal, unbelievable deal. And oh. I've been there, lived there, like Texas. They're going to buy this so fast, Ashley? Yes. Oh, how long do they last? All right. This is still available at $995? This is going to go. Please give this consideration. This is an original painting. It was painted with a palette knife by David Lloyd Glover. And I know it sounds crazy. I, I've watched other networks. and I've been on TV for almost a third of a century. But when you see a painting that other now uh, that other galleries say what now? What do they want to see? No, I'm just going to sell it. Done. So this is sold. This is a Schofield. He came up fifty bucks. It's his so fast. I only got one minute. Oh, that'd be a deal of a lifetime on the Schofield. I'll be left with one Schofield. Sounds like a movie. Hey, did you know that uh, Schofield's grandmother is Native American? Yeah. No, uh, it was, what was the tribe she was from? The Potawatomi. What'd they say? Done. All right, the Schofield sold. The Glovers sold. Let me get, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank David. Come on back up here because we only got about 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Well, give or take a second. You live close to here. Yes, I do. Ten minutes from here. Did you see the protest? No. Over Palestine? They <laughs> blocked a highway in the 110. Oh, my goodness. No, I didn't see that, no, luckily. I didn't either. I, I left out. Thank no. you. We love you. We ship fast. Merry Bye. Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Uh, what was George Costanza's holiday? Festivus. Oh, yeah. Festivus. Festivus. <laughs> we'll see you later, and Jack will be here next. All right. Yeah, thank you. Fantastic.